Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I will open the public hearing on House Bill 1531 and recognize the sponsor, Representative Proudly. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you. Morning. I am Andrew Prout, representing uh, Hillsborough County District 37, the towns of Hudson and Pelham. Uh, House Bill 1531 would restrict the public release of the raw vote numbers for the general election of the President of the United States until after the Electoral College meets in mid-December. This bill would only take effect if and when more states join the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact and it receives a quorum of the Electoral College votes necessary to come active. I'm certain the committee has already heard, recently heard sufficient testimony regarding the uh, compact, uh, given that the House just accepted its unanimous recommendation to interim study House Bill 541 earlier this month. And uh, the bill would have had New Hampshire join that compact. So I'll try not to be repetitive of anything you've probably already heard about. We appreciate it. <laughs> However, there's one section of the proposed compact I would like to draw your attention to, and that's Article 3 of the model text which reads, uh, prior to the time set by law for the meeting and voting of the presidential electors, the chief election official of each member state shall determine the number of votes for each presidential slate in the, each state of the United States and the District of Columbia in which votes have been cast in the statewide popular election and shall add such votes together to produce the national popular vote total for each presidential slate. House Bill 1531 would prevent the operation of the compact by the other states by refusing the information release necessary for them to perform this section of the compact. This bill would still have the Secretary of State declare the winner of New Hampshire, permit the release of the percentages of the vote that each candidate received, and permit partial results to release along with the percentage of the state's registered voters rep represented by those partial votes. Essentially, it permits the election night news coverage to be fairly similar to how it is today. The only thing missing is the raw vote numbers. Without these raw vote numbers, New Hampshire cannot be compared to other states, and the national public vote tally cannot be calculated. In the book, which we recently all received, Every Vote Equal, you see copies of it around, uh, includes exactly this idea as one of its uh, myths and frequently asked questions uh, that it tends to be bonked in section 9.14.2 on page 538. Includes an opinion by law professor Norman R. Williams espousing the concept used in this bill to keep the election results confidential for a time. The book's author really only reports from law professor uh, is the question if any state would ever actually adopt such a process. But notably, it's not really question the law professor's argument that would be the way It's my sincere hope that the National Public Vote Interstate State Compact uh, never reaches a form and goes into effect and therefore also this bill proposed would never go into effect. But I believe by passing this bill, which points to the very clear point here for us in the compact, to help ensure that additional states do not enact the compact and that I to realize. Um, nothing I've heard really about this bill is that it violates uh, federal law, specifically Title III, uh, Section 6 of the U.S. Code. Uh, however, that section both allows for other ascertainments under the laws of such state, which this bill would provide for, the declaration of the winner, and the percentages to be released, and also does not set a very explicit timeline on when that information would have to be delivered to the archivist of the United States. Um, the archivist, archivist needs to deliver before Congress meets in the first week of January, but beyond the needs to the archivist before he's required to deliver it, it doesn't set a timeline. It does set a timeline when it needs to be delivered to the electors that meet in New Hampshire, cast and seal their votes, but that is allowed to be on the day of, that they do that, the day of their election. Uh, you know, so there's two, at least two methods of complying with federal law under this bill. Uh, I didn't want to prescribe one over the other, and so I didn't get very prescriptive in that. Um, thank you for your time and consideration. I'll be happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Any questions for Representative Proud from any members of the committee? Written testimony. I do not know. <coughs> have that after? Certainly. Uh, Thank you. It would help. Okay. Would we all write a phone Yes. Representative Comey. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you for taking my question. So this bill prohibits um, 
election officer, officials from to you is, uh, let, let's go down memory lane. The year 2000, remember the state of Florida, where they had dangling chad, hanging chad, and all kinds of things because the election result was um, in dispute. How do you reconcile that kind of situation with this bill? So, uh, I do acknowledge that recounts and question vote counting and all that is a very complicated topic that's addressed at length in the RSAs. And this bill, that is not the intent of the bill to interfere with any of those processes, and therefore it exempts the bill becomes completely inactive if a recount has been requested. And so recounts would be processed exactly how they are now, and this bill would not be in effect at all if there's a recount in progress. Further question, Richard? Hello? Further question? You don't have to have one I was asking. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm still formulating one in my head because um, I still want to uh, get to the bottom of this. However, I will give a chance to any uh, other member who may have a question to um, Any further forward. questions? Representative Gay. Okay, this is really embarrassing, but I do not understand. The purpose of this bill, the purpose of this bill would be for to prevent or deny assistance to other states that want to execute the national popular vote in state compact, or other states that may have elected to enact that compact to effectively execute their compact and choose how to allocate their presidential electors, they need the election results from all 51 jurisdictions that possess electoral college members, the 50 states and Washington, D.C. But we do not have to give them that information. And if they do not receive that information, the compact doesn't say what happens next. Essentially, the compact fails. Follow up, President Gay. Yeah. Thank. Oh, by the way, thank you for taking my question. Questions. Um, so this would, if I understand correctly, this would prohibit any kind of release of the count besides the percentage by towns, by state, by anybody. Um, so, <clears throat> okay, because anything else I'm going to say is a statement and not a question. <laughs> so, okay. That is correct. It was prevented for a time until the Electoral College meets, which is required, I believe, I know by federal law and I believe also by the Constitution, to be on the same day in all jurisdictions and all states. Any further questions, Representative Representative Comey. Yes. So, what if there is a court decision on 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 such um, an election result and the public wants to know because yes the public has a right to know every detail about our election the voters precise uh, to be specific has a right to know um, the result of our election so what if there is a court decision specifying that this um, results uh, be made public due to public demand. That would essentially be a court decision overturning the law, I would assume, on constitutional or violating <laughs> federal law grounds if the, court, if, uh, if the court found that they had violated some federal law. I do not believe it does, but it's certainly possible court to disagree. Uh, if there was such a decision, the law would be struck down. I don't see how that would be different than any other law that so uh, one of the fears that we have right now is that Russia is trying to meddle in our elections and we don't know whether it's only Russia there might be other key players out there who are trying to put their fingers in our election what if this happens and everybody wants to know um, the real numbers of the results or of the total vote cast. How does that, how does that play into this bill? So this bill only withholds release of those numbers for a short period of time, five to six weeks, depending on the exact calendar. Between the November election and the, when the Electoral College meets in mid-December. The exact wording of when that day is specified is evading at the moment, but I believe it's something like the second Wednesday of December. 
one more question. So if, no question. Yes. So, <laughs> so if the, the election result is in dispute and for five or six weeks we have not been able to resolve it, that means that the Electoral College cannot meet. Is that correct? So because they will have to meet based on the results. election results that won't go through the recount process that I believe is RSA 664 and this bill by its own terms is completely inactive if a recount has been initiated under that RSA and therefore the numbers would be made public in that case and the dispute over the results of the election would be fully public, would be fully open to the public as the recount process uh, continues. But also what you just said of a dispute where that is not resolved by the time the Electoral College meets is exactly one of the problems with the actual interstate compact. It's because by tying all the states together through that compact, a dispute like that in any state, that say, for example, is uh, worst case scenario, uh, say a dispute in Hawaii that is not decided until the day of the Electoral College meeting, perhaps noon on that day, or end of the court closing, 5 p.m. on that day. Well, 5 p.m. in Hawaii is already past midnight here. Mm -hmm. And today, that would be legal for a court not to decide the results of the Hawaii elections until 5 p.m. on the day of the Electoral College vote. But with, if the National Public Vote Interstate Compact was in effect, that would completely screw up the compact's operation in every other state because it would be actually past midnight in all those other states before a decision is reached. So that is exactly one of the flaws in the actual compact that this bill is hoping to prevent. Mr. Chairman, I will... Um Request uh, to be allowed new line of question. Uh, after <laughs> Representative Lang is finished, Representative Lang. So, uh, Andrew, thank you, thank you Representative, for taking my question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, I, I do have concerns how this plays in with other portions of the of election law, specifically in talks to final counting results for the moderator, which is 659 70, which says that the moderator has to announce the results and vote tallies of all these things. In addition, there's paperwork that's filed by the moderator to the Secretary of State. Would that now be exempt from a 918 request? Um, how are we dealing with those kind of things? I mean, is the moderator not supposed to announce the tally and not <coughs> the Secretary of State? How do we get around those provisions of other periods of election law that require public announcement? So, thanks for the question. Um, how I would envision that working is, yes, the moderator would not announce the raw numbers. It would certainly be permitted to announce percentages uh, and declare the winner of the town, perhaps. They would, yes, file, of course, the same report as the Secretary of State. would also be allowed to announce the percentages, um, but not the raw numbers. And yes, it would be uh, withheld from 91A requests for that five to six week period. Thank you. Any further questions or representative from anyone who hasn't been recognized? Representative Comey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, if there is a recount, and after the recount, the result of the recount is still being disputed by both parties and now they are headed to court. Does it mean that the court will have to uh, um, implement expedited hearing on this part, on, on that case, because this has to do with um, uh, the electoral college meeting? Are, are you saying that this, this bill will force the court to immediately take up uh, that case when it comes to them? So, uh, thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. uh, of the in the proposed bill, uh, uh, part one, section section one, it says unless a recount has been requested pursuant to 669, if the recount is requested and any you know, any follow-on actions would would be following that, this bill is not in play. It, 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 it becomes completely inactive. So, if there's a recount in progress, whether it proceeds to court after the recount process or not this bill would be inactive and the results would be released immediately upon the recount being filed. <coughs> and so therefore, in the recount scenario, this bill is not in play at all. 
Pull up. So this bill. A follow up purpose. I'm yes. <laughs> so this bill only comes into play when all is well. Correct. Okay. Thank you. You have answered my question. Any further questions? Seeing none. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Oregon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'm Representative Timothy Oregon from the Crackham uh, District 6, which is the towns of Durham and Manbury. And um, Durham, uh, Durham, of course, is one of the largest college towns, so you may have mixed feelings about whether or not our people are popular, but our resident population should be counted. But anyway, um, I don't have any written testimony. I was not willing to speak to this, but I can count on my own speed ballot court inside the state, not as long as he would. <coughs> this is, uh, obviously is an attempt to undo the National Popular Vote Compact, and I uh, yeah, sponsor's careful not to say it, but part of the feeling that we deserve, that us small states deserve more of a say in the electoral policy because the large states, they have large places like New York and California, which some people think aren't as American as the other states, but they are just as American as the states. I have been a resident of both states at various times in my life. Um, and so the uh, electoral college historically is a good thing. I'm not really, I'm agnostic on the issue of whether or not we should have the national popular vote compact, but certainly historically the electoral college is a good thing. It would not have been popular possible when our republic was founded to hold the national popular vote anyway and the good reasons why that would have been a bad idea if it was possible but i don't um i think this is a bad idea we shouldn't be um we shouldn't be we shouldn't be withholding information the public's the right to know just to uh just to undo something that other states are doing also it's going to be totally ineffective because first of all the campaigns I assume we're going to know what the vote totals are, and they, there's nothing in there to stop them from releasing it. They probably will, especially if there's a recount. And also, um, they routinely, they routinely, Secretary State really routinely releases um, figures on how many ballots were cast, and it's very simple to infer how many presidential ballots were cast. So even if you're just giving the percentages, um, everybody. Everybody who's been through fifth grade math will easily be able to get a pretty accurate idea of what the raw vote total is that we're suppressing. Because, um, and historically, historically there's a, a fairly there's like a very there's a very established pattern of like how many what percentage of people vote for president and then how much it drops off from the governor and on down to the other offices. So if we unless we're going to suppress the governor's vote and everything else, everybody can always uh, just get the total by adding up all the governor's votes and then I think whatever it is, I think it's about 2% or whatever. And um, everybody's going to have a pretty good idea of what this popular vote is. So that's, uh, it's ineffective, it's a bad idea. And, um, and I, I think it's a, uh, so I think, it, I think it's, I think if a majority of the other states adopt the national popular vote camp, come back, we should, uh, we should respect that because they, uh, we don't deserve, I mean, Maybe we do because we're, we're New Hampshire's the greatest state in the union, but the other small states are not any more deserving of, a, of an extra of a, of a uh, disproportionate uh, vote in the uh, voting process. Nor Rhode Island, and Hawaii, and South Dakota, North Dakota. They're great states too, but they they don't deserve a disproportionate voice just because they're small. Although I really so that's um, that's why I think this is a, a bad idea. And I, I'm getting the feeling that there's a bipartisan consensus that it's uh, not a good idea so you are that's interesting well, <laughs> <laughs> the questions are all pretty skeptical about this. um is there any questions for representative Horik? Yes. i do yes I have I have have <laughs> <laughs> you, eat, you ate your weedies today <laughs> <laughs> so uh thank you mr chairman and thank you uh rep horrigan yes. at the close of the polls we have members of the press, particularly from AP, who will be there to, to hear the, 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 the total number of votes cast. There will be representatives from um, the, the candidates as well as each party. And they are all there to report the number of votes that was cast for each candidate, correct? Yes, I agree. So, even if we were to pass this bill, 
what you are saying is that it's going to be difficult to implement the bill because all these loopholes where information will pass through uh, will make it difficult for this bill to be effective. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, Thank you. You have answered the question. Yes, yeah, that's another way around it. You can send people around to look at every registered tape at every polling place in the state and uh, add it all up. So that's an even more more difficult, even more accurate way to back out this information that this bill thinks we should be suppressing. So, and, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. And thank you. Any further questions, Representative Horry? Yes. See, seeing none. Thank you, thank you very much. much. To the Judiciary Committee, where we hear lots of right to know bills. Have fun. Chair recognizes Mr. Saul and news is welcome. Thank you. Just want to give a regular pro ranger my testimony. So who is the senior advisor to the National Popular Vote? Mr. Chairman, members, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, my name is Saul Anusis. Uh, I am a former chairman of the Michigan Republican Party and also served six years on the Republican National Committee. And currently am the uh, one of the senior advisors for the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact Bill. Uh, I'm here to um, oppose House Bill 1531. I have written testimony that I have passed out. Um, if it's helpful, I can email it to uh, Representative um, and help you have that. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to kind of summarize my um, uh, testimony that I've passed out. But I, I think this is bad public policy, and it's also uh, uh, flawed legally. First of all, um, Article 8 of the New Hampshire Constitution uh, basically calls for a transparent and, uh, counting of the votes. So I believe on the face of it, this bill is, uh, violates the New Hampshire Constitution, Article 8. Um, secondly, the secret statewide vote counts on presidential elections by uh, any single official can't be more dangerous. I think as Representative Comey mentioned the idea of whether it's the Russians, Ukrainians, or anybody else who may be interfering in elections, the idea that we were going to keep a secret vote count, I think, is... is um, something that is very unusual and many people uh, would consider it very un-American. Um, third, um, it allows us, uh, the bill's goal is to basically uh, negate the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact if it is implemented across the country. Uh, but it provides for recounts and the recount laws in, in uh, New Hampshire are very lenient and the reality is that whoever thought they were the winner of the national popular vote would immediately file for a recount if this bill was actually in place and have and have votes counted automatically and submitted uh, under the uh, provisions of the new hampshire law so from that standpoint it's really not a very workable bill because on its face a it's unconstitutional and b you just file for a recount and every candidate would do that it would just be a strategic decision wouldn't even matter whether it was close or not close the uh, the bill is drafted in such a way that it's very easy to negate that if the bill was actually kept in place and there was a recount, think of the craziness of having secret court proceedings if you were to go to court. Um, again, there's only one secret court we currently have in the United States, and that's the FISA court. We already know the kinds of problems that has caused. And the idea of New Hampshire being the first state to have secret presidential elections and then secret courts in order for recounts would be a great reputational um, feather in your cap, I guess, if you believed in uh, that kind of uh, politics. Um, the existing law uh, allows um, parties to participate. There are many ways that you can get results under where it's at, and again, making this very difficult um, uh, to have. Um, there's also no penalties if you don't abide by this. So theoretically, the moderators who announce it um, every day of the election would have no legal repercussions if they wanted to basically do what most of their citizens required them to do or expect them to do. Um, the reality, New Hampshire is one of four states that does not have provisional ballots. Um, you take great pride in the fact that the night of the election, your votes are certified. It's over. Um, there's only four states in the country that do that. New Hampshire is one of them. You would eliminate that procedure uh, that makes it very unique uh, in the country in that regard. Um, there actually is a federal law uh, that, that, as my in the testimony that states out that you must provide um, the certificate of ascertainment the day of or before the electoral college. Um, it's the Electoral College Vote Act of 1887, and it's very clear it's in the testimony that I've attached. Um, so the advocates for this bill basically look at this as a poison pill for the national popular vote interstate compact. Uh, they believe it's a clever way of somehow eliminating the ability to have a national popular vote. But if states decide that that is the system they want to use, it's you know, I'm, I'm not sure how um, 
I don't want to necessarily ethical, but the idea that you're going to decide to thwart uh, other states' uh, uh, abilities to participate in the election by hiding your election results, I think, aren't very good. Um, if you listen to the lobbyist who was opposed to the national popular vote, he basically says, our goal here is to throw the system into chaos. Um, and he goes through and explains by doing this, passing this bill and not having an official vote count, it would do that. Uh, Town Hall, which happens to be a fairly conservative article, uh, conservative newspaper, um, you know, asks a question, why are we opposed? Why are we afraid of the Constitution? If this bill is passed and people want to use it, why don't we let it go? And even Tara Ross, who is uh, a lawyer and one of the legal uh, experts traveling around the country opposing national popular vote in the state compact, See, she says this bill is crazy, anti-democratic, and completely unacceptable, except it might help screw up the national popular vote interstate compact. So that's the rationale for it. So anyways, um, again, I think this is bad public policy. I think this violates uh, the spirit of uh, the Constitution and the law here in New Hampshire. And uh, on behalf of the national popular vote interstate compact, folks who believe that um, we want to make sure that every vote in every state is politically relevant in every election for the general election, uh, we respectfully oppose this bill. Any questions for Mr. Anuzis from members of the community? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, oh, sorry. I do have a quick question. Yes, sir. Uh, I got the impression from your testimony that bills exactly like this or similar to this are being introduced in other legislatures? Uh, we are under the understanding there are three other states considering, and it's basically opponents to the national popular are trying to work. You know, basically it's a poison pill. Thank you. Yes. Any further questions? None. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Is there anyone else who wishes to testify on House Bill 16, uh, 1531? I would like to. Yes, sir. Can you please provide a pink card later for our clerk? I will do that. Can you please tell us who you are. Welcome. I am, I am Bill Allen from um, where? I wasn't going to testify, and I'm not going to be very long at all. But um, I was not at the hearings for the NTV uh, bill, so I don't know what was said there. Very briefly, though, if, in my opinion, if NTV is enacted, your vote will be recorded as whatever California and New York want. You will be disenfranchised. It won't matter. Because New Hampshire doesn't have that kind of law. This is not a secret vote count. It will be released. And the result will already be known. Unless there is a recount requested, and that is an issue, yes. Unless there is a recount requested, we'll know what the percentages are. The specific number? Maybe not. Um, I'm not voting for AP's convenience. And the last point, I guess, um, addressing what's been here, counting up all the municipalities, yes, that would seem, um, assuming they're allowed to release those totals, um, that would seem to be a way of getting a number, but it's not an official count. As far as I know, Secretary of State has to release that number, and until he does, it can't be used for the Electoral College. Um, the NPV violates the spirit of the Constitution, not this. That's it. Thank you. Are there any questions for the gentleman from Member State? Seeing none, thank you very much. I will close the public hearing on House Bill 1531, and we will go directly into the hearing on House Bill 1665.